Hello, this is Shakira Brown. I'm going to turn my webcam on now so you can see me. Hi, I'm Shakira Brown. I am the presenter today for the uh, D Do It Yourself for Entrepreneurial Businesses PR strategy type presentation today. And I am representing the America's Small Business Development Center at the College of New Jersey. So I'm going to turn off my webcam so that we can focus more on the presentation. And you can learn a little bit more about me. I hope everybody is having a great day. I'm an award-winning PR and marketing expert, and I am also a managing principal of SMB Strategic Media, which provides affordable public relations, marketing, and other services to small businesses. I am also a marketing consultant with the America Small Business Development Center at the College of New Jersey, which is the host of today's presentation. I have over 20 years of mass communication experience and actually 16 years of providing public relations strategies for personalities, inventors, professional groups, publicly traded companies, entrepreneurial organizations, middle market firms, and a wide variety of industries you can see here. So I have a lot of experience doing public relations. I also have a background in television production, and some of my other specialties include search engine optimization, branding, website development, and social media. So I have a, a vast experience, and I've, I've pretty much touched on a, a lot of different things over the years. So let's talk about our host today. That is the America's Small Business Development Center at the College of New Jersey. And the center is here to help you. We're here to help Mercer County businesses maneuver around the obstacles to success. We provide business counseling services at no cost to you. I'm going to say that again. We provide business counseling services at no cost to you. Thanks in part to the U.S. Small Business Administration, the state of New Jersey, and Mercer County. So if you're not receiving any counseling from us at this time, you should definitely check us out. Go to the website uh, right on your screen, sbdcnj.com, and fill out a request for counseling form. And actually, we'll probably end up sending you one of those following this presentation. Some of our partners include uh, Rutgers University, of course, the College of New Jersey, which is where this particular office is based, the state, uh, the SBA, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, uh, we have the chambers in Mercer County, Mid-Jersey Chamber, and the Princeton Chamber, as well as the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. So we have great partners. So without further ado, we're going to begin our presentation. I do want to point out that we have a questions uh, area in the control panel in, within, uh, within the tool here, as well as a chat. So if you have any questions for me, please uh, feel free to share them. If I'm able to reach out to you during this presentation at the end, I will. If not, I will answer any questions that you have afterwards. Also, I want to point out that we have two handouts in the control panel to promote two of our uh, upcoming events. And I want to, I will kind of show those at the end if we have time, but they're there for you to download. So let's begin. Well, I always like to start with the basics because I don't assume that anybody exactly knows what public relations is. So let's start off with a sort of a, a, the definition. And I, I, I chose to go to the Public Relations Society of America's uh, definition because the Public Relations Society of America spent a great deal of time about five years ago uh, to, they, they queried the entire uh, membership, uh, which is an international uh, body at this point, it's all over the world. And this is what they came up with. Public relations is a strategic communication process that builds mutually beneficial relationships between organizations and their publics. And I know that sounds kind of like jargonish, but that's what they came up with. But I have something a little bit more simple. PR is a way of managing your reputation, okay? What you do and what you say and what others say about you. Done well, this allows you to increase awareness. Everybody wants more awareness for their business. You know, if there's more awareness, you would figure that there'd be more opportunities for you to grow. To help you boost your sales. If you tell people what you have going on, more likely they'll start buying from you. you. Drive traffic to your website. PR is a great way to do that. Create buzz around a new product or service. If you're gonna have a new release of something, you have to tell somebody about it. So PR is a perfect way to do that. And it also can help you engage with prospective and existing customers as well as employees. So PR actually is a very valuable tool, which I think is often underutilized because it's often misunderstood. So hopefully we'll clear some of that up today. The PRSA definition talked about building relationships. So who could you build relationships with using PR as a vehicle? Media, local media, national media, 
uh, online print, whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, other businesses, if you're a B2B B company, you might want to build more relationships with other businesses. That makes sense. Philanthropic organizations, okay? If, you have, uh, if you're a mission-driven organization, uh, you may want to build partnerships with other mission-driven organizations. Government officials say you want to help see a piece of legislation get across. You know, by using PR, you can help you kind of raise your attention and awareness around your brand. Uh, and of course, the community at large, whomever, whatever that community looks like to you. And then there's the world via social media. Social media is a powerful tool for public relations. So now we're going to get to the part where we're going to get started with how to manage your own PR, because a lot of people think of PR as you hire someone, which you can. I mean, I, I definitely am hired by people to do PR. But there are ways that you can do your own PR. So let's 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 go and in, get into that a little bit. I always say it's great to make your own news. Make your own news is something that uh, I've been preaching for years because no one knows your story and the story of your business better than you do. So it's you need to kind of do some soul searching and figure out what do you want people to know about your business, right? So it's a great thing to do is to make sure that people know what you have going on and, and, and if you're informing them, you're educating them about what you do, which is, of course, very important. So you want to let people know who you are, what you do, and what you stand for. Social media is powerful in doing that. Any of your social media posts should have the PR-type angle to it. Um, not all of it, because not everybody wants to hear about you all the time. But there are ways to be really, really savvy with, with social media and using videos on YouTube and posts on Facebook and you know, at mentioning other people in Twitter, there's so many great ways to have your news out there. And every social update should be considered as a micro press release. And also social updates can lead to bigger stories. And we're going to talk a little bit about at mentioning journalists a little later. But one of the questions, I would call it a burning question that a lot of people give to me um, over time has been, well, you know, if I hire you to do PR, can you guarantee that you're going to get a media placement. And I guess you could say the same thing if you were going to put your time and energy into your own PR program. How do you guarantee PR to work or if it's going to get a media placement? So what I always tell people is this. This is how I explain this to any of my clients who have any sort of uh, uh, concerns about embarking on a PR strategy. There are no guarantees with traditional media other than if you never try PR, you will guarantee that you will never receive press coverage. That's what I tell people. If, if, you, if you put up the roadblock that you're, you know, you're worried that, uh, well, if I, if I do this, it's not going to lead to that, you're never going to get anything. You have to have your mind open to PR. So if you never try it, the only guarantee you have is that you'll never get press coverage. So I have a great example. I have a client that has a specialty food company, and this company um, offers a, a flavored salts, and it's a great product. And they've been around for about five or six years, and they hired me to, to do their social media for them. I'm actually them on social media. And they don't do any PR. They don't really do any advertising. They do a lot of their work going from trade shows, different trade shows and craft shows, and they're, they're setting up shop and tables every weekend somewhere. It's a really a, a grind, to, to tell you the truth. And one of the things as a publicist that I know over the years is that no matter what the holiday, there's always some sort of gift guide, a holiday gift guide. And of course, around the, the December holidays is when you really see these gift guides. But there are other gift guides throughout the year, Mother's Day gift guide, Father's Day gift guide. And my client is not pitching any of these. So I always ask, you know, do you want me to help you do this this year? And then they always have the whole guarantee question. And I tell them my, you know, the only guarantee you have is that you'll never get press coverage. And it's true. They've been around for five years and they have never been in any of the 5,000 gift guides. And I, that's a real number. 5,000 gift guides are put out throughout the year through uh, whether it's a TV segment, whether it's a, a online some, a, a website, whether it's a print. There are thousands of gift guides. And as long as they never are pitching them, they'll never, their product will never appear in them. And to be in a gift guide, if you're a food product, say like you end up in the food and wine magazine gift guide, it's amazing. 
but the only way you're going to get there is by pitching it. So just keep that in mind. But if you want guarantees, you want to pay for advertising. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between PR and advertising, because they're not the same. PR is indirect marketing tool, whereas advertising, which is on the right side here, is direct marketing tool. Okay, so these tools are very different, whereas, you know, the direct marketing tool allows you to be really specific in your message, whereas public relations, depending upon what it is you're trying to get out there, um, you don't really know exactly where you're going to end up. You can pitch a certain place, and but it's less controlled, right? Uh, like I said, you pitch, you can place articles, you buy advertising. That's your guarantee. If you if you're buying a space, you are guaranteeing you're going to be somewhere. Also, with public relations, the third party validation when a local TV show has you on talking about what you do, everybody is looking at you as an expert because the, t the program, the, their, tr their trusted news program, is showing you as an expert. Whereas with an ad, they know that you've put money to be in, the, in that spot. So it's very different as far as the perception. Uh, PR is easier on the marketing budget, even if you hire someone else to do it, whereas advertising is more expensive to implement because you need to be very consistent with an advertising campaign. You need to have, if everybody, if any, if you ever think about placing one ad, you're wasting your money. Advertising needs to be seen over and over again. And that's where the, the, the financial difference is with PR and marketing, PR and advertising is, is that you really need to be consistent with your, with your advertising campaigns. So with PR, once you get a PR placement, you can really uh, have an opportunity to use that over and over again in your own materials, on your website, and it still holds up. So that's a really great thing. But I do want to mention that if you've ever been approached to someone say, oh, you can place an article in my magazine and, you know, it's just going to cost you this. That is what they call advertorial. And that's perfectly fine for you. Um, but advertorial allows you to write your own article, and then they place it, and you pay for it. It's not the same, though. So uh, regular publications is better. So if you're going to embark on your own PR campaign, where do you begin? So my suggestion is you have to begin with, you know, what's newsworthy out of your, your organization? You know, have you opened up a new location? Do you have a new product or service? Uh, new hires, you know, uh, if you're in the Mercer County market and you're a member of the Mid-Jersey Chamber, they actually post new hires. If you send them a, a note with the who, what, when, where's, and why, and how of the new hire, they will post that in their magazine. Um, upcoming events, if you're having an open house or a charity event, uh, this is all ways for you to, you know, that becomes newsworthy for you. If you're going to be speaking somewhere or making an appearance somewhere, um, if you have a new partnership, you have a strategic alliance, that's where, if, if, if allowed with your partners, you're allowed to do that. Um, of course, awards and, and, and other recognitions are a great way to, to kind of garner press for yourself. And we're going to talk more about that later. And also, if you have a customer success story, uh, with their permission to do a case study or customer success story, that's a great way to get some PR to promote your business and have someone else saying how great you are. That's a really amazing way to do that. But you need to also remember, you have to focus on goals. What do you want to accomplish with your PR? Is it to build brand awareness, which definitely should be on the top list of things you should do, um, is to increase community engagement, right? Are you trying to be more um, involved with your community so that they can patronize your business or do whatever it is that your mission is for your company? Um, is it that you want to prospect new brand ambassadors, right? Do you want more people out there saying that you're fabulous? Uh, is it that you want to drive sales or create, build memberships if you have a membership or subscription model? Drive conversation and volume or improve your organic search. PR is a fantastic way to improve your organic search on, on the internet or through Google or Bing or any of the search engines. If you want to have really great positive links to your site, you definitely should focus on using PR for that, whether it's in the form of a press release or another article and being able to get that link back from that article is golden. Or is it that you want to promote your expertise through thought leadership? Are you an expert at something and that people sh would learn from you and potentially to consider buying from you because they see you as an expert, right? So you need to come up with those goals. And once you've come up with 
the goals and you've prioritized what's newsworthy, what is the best way to get the word out there, right? So press release is sort of the, the uh, what the model is today. And you want to make sure that that's something that is well-written and that answers all the questions. We're gonna talk about developing press releases soon. Um, blogs, you can post it on a blog. A great blog that you could take note of is patch.com. It's a micro, hyper-local blog um, that has, uh, usually there's a community manager, um, and then there's uh, an area called the bulletin boards that you can post whatever you want up there, as long as it's appropriate. You know, they, they do have people who monitor these things. But it's a great way. You can post something up there once a week or twice a week. Um, and if, if one or two people see it that's different from who you're already reaching to, you're golden. Uh, social media. Create your press release and push out your own news through your social media channels. You could do this even through LinkedIn. You can do this through Twitter. There are all kinds of tools and ticks, trips, uh, tips and tricks that you can use to really get these things out there. You can also uh, have contributed media, you know, contribute your own articles and videos. Um, that's a great way. I can't tell you how important it is to be able to contribute your own article and position yourself as a thought leader and to create videos. You know, don't wait for someone to come with a fancy video camera. Pull out your, your, your smartphone that you paid good money for, put it on video and start talking, right? Get your word out there. And then there's wire releases, and there are some free ones you can use. I, I suggest a few at the end. And then, of course, there's the paid ones, which, uh, which if you really are trying to get some traction, those are good to use. But they're also be best to use for research, and I'll mention that a little bit about that later. But above all else, you should definitely focus on your outcome, right? Don't create a press release just for the sake of having one. Determine what you desire to get out of your media and let that drive your content. I can't stress that enough. Make sure that you really understand and are committed to an outcome for your news. Uh, just be, and just you don't want to just be able to say to people, "Oh, I have a press release." Well, what is it about? You know, what were you hoping to get out of that press release? So here's some tips on writing a good press release, and I hope that this is helpful to you. You need to collect your information and determine a good story about your news, okay? Make sure it's compelling. Uh, make sure there's something interesting in there. Make sure you have quotes in there. Use research facts and figures, okay? This, this is easy to find because of the internet. You can create Google Alerts to find out what surveys and researchers out there, and you can cherry pick what you would like to include in your press release. You can cite them, and if it's someone uh, or an organization that is very prominent, you can cite them as a reputable third-party source, and it kind of make, it validates you and makes you look a little better. Um, when you draft your press release, you write it, and then you rewrite it, and you kind of walk away from it, and then come back and rewrite it again. Make sure it's solid. Uh, the style of release, you should always remember who, what, when, where, why, and how, okay? That's exactly it. You have to remember that you need to have that in there. Um, as, as a, it's very important. And be inspired by other press releases, okay? You can do be inspired by other press releases by reading press releases from big companies. I like to go on, when I'm working on something for a client, um, especially a new industry that I'm not familiar with, I go on to where other people are actually uh, writing about the same thing, and I look to see what they're saying. You can do that too. You can use PR Newswire and Business Wire, which I'm going to have a list of those at the end, where you can actually read those press releases, take them, and sort of model your own press release off of those if you find them of interest. So how do you pitch traditional media with a press release? You need to know who covers your industry, your area, your market, because, and who matters, you know, what, what matters to, you know, and also you get to, get to know what they write about. If sometimes if you go onto a website, let's use uh, NJ.com for instance, if you go onto NJ.com and you click on a reporter's article, if you click on their name or there's another link on there, you'll get a list of all their recent articles. Look and see what else they're writing about. You know, was that an anomaly that they wrote about your space or is this what they cover? Kind of pay attention to that. And you can do this in the morning when you're having your coffee. You kind of just peruse around. And if you see something that makes sense that kind of relates to your business, take note of who is writing about that or who's reporting about that on the news, on TV, or who's blogging about that. 
and follow them and see if that's something that they're interested in because then you could reach out to them with your story, right? So you want to make sure that you know that you can, you can save reporters or journalists a lot of time and energy and bloggers too, a lot of time and energy by giving your story to them, you know, and giving them a nice fully packaged story. There's nothing like that. Uh, definitely always have a full story. So if, for instance, if you have an exercise business, if you're in the fitness business and you want to do tips to lose weight for the summer, you know, put that article together, put the tips together and send it to the person who's who writes for or covers health and wellness at whatever media that you feel that you want to be in. You know, package it up for them. Make it nice. Give the media more than what you think they need. That will win you over every time with them. They will, you will win them over and they will use you again and again if they know that you're going to give them exactly what they need and they do not have to do a lot of research. That is something that I've done. I've made wonderful relations with the media by doing just that. So please always give more than what you think they need. So let's talk about connecting to the media. Email your press release and follow up. Um, nine times out of 10, you probably will need to follow up. Uh, the, they get uh, hundreds and hundreds of press releases a day, and you definitely need to reach back out if you haven't heard from them. Uh, it's okay to call, but you know email is better. Um, but if you if it's a local media uh, uh, person, then you could probably reach out to them and they might answer the phone. They're not as persnickety as sort of the national media. Uh, like if you are interested in being in a national magazine, good housekeeping or something like that, you may have a little bit trouble of kind of reaching them via phone and email is probably best. But, you know, always have a clear subject line, too, when you're reaching out to them via email so that they know what it is. If it's an article submission, put that. If it's a, if it's a pitch, put pitch in the subject line and the name of the pitch. Be very specific. Um, offer to comment on local issues that aren't just about your business. That is huge. You should definitely always consider thought leadership as a way to do PR uh, for yourself. Um, if it's something uh, in the news about uh, a statistic and you have some insight into that, reach out to whoever's writing about that or reporting on that and say, hey, look, this is my perspective. If you're interested, let me know. And you might get a uh, something out of that. You really might. It's it's an amazing thing. I actually was able to get one of my clients on the front page of the Wall Street Journal because I followed a particular reporter who was writing about subject matter that one of my clients could speak on. And after they wrote one of those stories, I said, if you do this again, please let me know. I will have someone who can also comment. And when that phone call came in to, to interview my client, it was huge. And when that article showed up on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, above the fold, meaning above the fold of the newspaper, it was amazing. The phone was ringing off the hook. Everybody was excited. It was huge. So always, always keep your eye out for opportunities to be a thought leader and offer your once it just because it was published one time or it was the it was reported one time on TV or shown before doesn't mean it won't happen again. Reach out to them and say, hey, next time you do this, let me help you with this. This is what I have to offer. Be very visible, especially at public events. And we're going to talk about that. Be happy to have your photos taken and be quoted wherever you are. Look, look around and see who is. Is there someone they're taking pictures? Find out where they're. Find out who they're with. Right. As a follow up to with the media, offer to uh, send to email them additional information as well as high res photos to send to the journalist. Always do that. They say, oh, I can get you. I can send. And then always do that via a link. Use the cloud. Uh, always meet their deadlines. That's very important. If they say, you know, I'm going to be finishing up the story tomorrow morning, have it to something to them that that evening. All right. Don't don't wait to the morning. Get it to them as soon as possible. That's very important. So the best ways to spend time is to pitch the media. Um, this is sort of blanket. This is not for everybody. But, you know, I have found that mornings are good. I always time my pitches to go out in the morning and not so much in the afternoon. Sometimes if they're it really depends on if it's a daily, if, it, if it's a weekly, are they reporting? You know, if it's news, if it's something that they're working on for that day it really does make a difference as to what type of media you're pitching as far as the timing of your pitch. Um, but I would say um, for print media, pitch four weeks or more in advance, especially if you're dealing with a holiday. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, if it's holiday, if you have a pitch around a holiday, you definitely need to do that. Um, email is always best. 
provide links to supporting media, use the cloud. I mentioned that earlier, use the cloud to share multimedia or just send a link. If you have a video on YouTube, send the link. If you have photos, put them up on Google Drive, put them up on Dropbox, put them up on box.com, just so that you're not clogging up email with your, your you know, 12 megabyte attachments. And another great way to pitch the media is through ad mentions. Uh, a lot of journalists are on Twitter. I would say more than uh, anywhere else, they're engaging on Twitter. And if you if you are paying attention, now that I'm mentioning this to you, start paying attention to reading, um, when you're reading these online articles, and you'll see their byline, uh, which is their name. You'll see, you know, what they're, you know, they're, what kind of they're a correspondent or whatever. And they often will have their Twitter handle. Take note of that because you can start at mentioning them on Twitter. You just mention, put the at symbol and their Twitter handle. Say, hey, here's my, you know, are you interested in these types in, you know, in fitness tips? I just made that up. Are you interested in accounting tips? And send them something and see if they'll engage back. Uh, a lot of journalists are very active on Twitter. Uh, it's a great place to, to connect with uh, journalists. But one of the things I want to mention to you is unless you have a holiday driven story idea or press release, Try to avoid major holidays for contacting them. You know, if you have a story that's related to July 4th and you're contacting them on July 3rd, it is way too late. If you have a July 4th story, you should be, you know, contacting them four weeks in advance or more. If you want to be in one of the long lead magazines, long lead meaning magazines that uh, that are put to that are that are ready to go about three months before they hit the newsstands, you know, you need to kind of be like. Six, three to six months out of pitching. You know, you really need to understand that, you know, there is this, you, you have to have lead time. So unless it's holiday driven, uh, avoid the holidays. But I, one note about the holidays is you know, think about other holidays outside of the big ones. You know, how can you, you know, are you a green company? How can you leverage Earth Day? You know, what, think about that. If you, um, you know, help small businesses, you know, what tips can you provide during small business week that a business writer might be interested in, in including your, your comments on? You know, if you have a restaurant uh, and you're going to do something big, you want to do something, you know, you're going to want to be a good Guinness World Record for the, eating the most tacos. Why not target Cinco de Mayo? You know, think about using built in what I what I like to call annual milestone days. I don't want to call them holidays because certainly. Um, you know, Earth Day is not a holiday, but it's a recognized day of recognition. You know, it's a day of recognition. So um, think about how you can leverage those. Once you have your press release and once you start getting media, you need to have a press page on your website, right? So whenever you create your first piece or you get your first media placement, make sure that you either have, you know, your website.com slash press or whatever your website address is dot com. Uh, slash media uh, page so that it's real easy to find your press page. Post all your latest press releases. Post your media placements there. Uh, put your contact information. Uh, if you hire somebody, put their contact information there with a phone number, email. Uh, if you want to, you just not something you have to do. You can make it easy for people to locate your your logo. Place a high resolution logo uh, in the media room so they can be downloaded. And other images, if you have a, if you your own personal image or anything that represents your business, it's a great place to put it is your media room, your press room. And of course, your bio and your business bio. Just the meaning of this is just to make it easy for the media to find what they need, especially if they're working on tight, tight deadlines. And then they don't have to reach out to you if they need your logo. One important thing I need everybody to remember as part of this presentation is that storytelling is important. It's the key to communicating with an audience in a meaningful way. I would say today, more than in the last 20 years, that being able to tell a story is so compelling. It allows you to kind of immerse people into whatever it is that you do. And when you tell stories, it is very impactful. So always be thinking about how a story related to your business can help you further brand what you do, okay? And I have a great example of that. Right here you see is Barbara Cork, and some of you may recognize her. She is one of the sharks on ABC Shark Tank. She's one of my favorite sharks because she really is savvy 
about marketing. And, and then it's not because she became rich and famous and, you know, and paid a bunch of people to do it. In the early days of her real estate brokerage business in New York, she was strapped for cash. She didn't have a lot of money like most business startups. So she had to be very savvy about her public relations. So she said that she had to create, to build her brand, and she decided to create a moniker. She said she gathered her employees into a room and she had them bring their kids and dogs and you know, she just wanted this like really fun, playful photo. But she took this photo with her own camera and then she decided to create an ad around it. And she basically labeled the ad the power brokers and then had some messaging about her real estate brokerage. And she said it was the she said her staff loved it because they were in this, you know, all of a sudden now they're in New York, New York magazine and they're in an ad. And she said they started some buzz around it. She so she said she kept it running for a while. She said nearly two years later, she gets a call from New York magazine. Uh, not to place another ad, but for a PR opportunity. And guess what? They were putting together a list of New York City's top power brokers. And guess who they wanted? They wanted six of Barbara Corcoran's staff members to be on this list. At the time, she states that she had did not even have the revenues, and she was nowhere near a power broker. But because she created the image and the perception that her, her, her firm was full of power brokers. The New York Times, excuse me, the New York Magazine fell for it and included six of her people on their list. So perception is reality. Another example of how she did this was uh, at the time, this is probably in the 80s, she said, uh, Madonna, uh, who at the time was the Lady Gaga of, that, of those times, was pregnant and she was looking for a apartment. And she said to herself, wow, I would love to be able to help Madonna find an apartment. So she said, well, I'm just going to write an article and, and pitch it out to the media. I'm going to pitch it out to TV. I'm going to pitch it out to, to the magazines and see if they're interested on the top 10 things Madonna should look for in her new apartment. Well, she said after she did this, she was on four different news programs as the broker to the stars. At the time, she had no actual celebrities as clients. But because she decided to kind of hijack the news, she created the perception that she was an expert at, at, at supporting celebrities in their real estate endeavors. And, be, and it was literally, she said at one point, one of, the, one of the anchors said, and now we're speaking with Barbara Corcoran, broker to the stars. She said she had no stars. And shortly after this media blitz that she created for herself, the lawyer, for the actor Richard Gere called her and asked her if she would be interested, if she would be so kind to help Richard Gere find his apartment in New York. And that started a whole new wave of business for her. So perception is reality. Don't forget it. Remember, newsworthiness isn't determined by how something affects your business internally, but rather how this changes the way the world interacts with your business. This is a very powerful statement. Just it goes back to the whole perception is reality. You know, once she labeled, once Barbara Corcoran labeled her team the power brokers, people treated her differently. Once she went out there and, and provided just a mere sort of pie in the sky list of things that a celebrity should look for in, a, in, 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 in their real estate purchase, she became the broker to the stars and had no stars as clients. So, really, the newsworthy isn't determined by something about how something affects your business internally, but rather how this changes the way the world interacts with your business, okay? So what can you do today to generate your own PR opportunity? The simple strategy is this, always keep your eye out for easy media opportunities, okay? Insert yourself into media coverage. Identify events where a public figure is speaking or making a scheduled appearance. When you're there, if you can get there, usually you can, talk to the media covering the event. Very simple. Target business luncheons and dinners. You know, in Mercer County, there's all kinds of events going on through the chambers and other professional groups. You know, who's speaking? Is, you know, is the county executive going to be there? Is the mayor going to be there? Is there a celebrity speaker? You know, will there be press there? You can even call up and ask, will there be press there, right? Grand openings. People invite dignitaries, you know, politicos, as I like to call them, to grand openings. Typically when that happens, somebody from the media shows up, takes a picture. 
why not you be in that picture? Conferences and conventions, great place to get media. There's always somebody covering a conference or convention. And then if you're there and you have the opportunity and you're not going to get in trouble, <laughs> you can interview the public figure for your own website, your blog or your e-newsletter, and create your own news opportunity. If you see on this uh, particular slide, there's a picture of myself and Brian Smith, founder of UG Australia. Last October, the Small Business Development Center at the College of New Jersey had Mr. Smith on campus, and he did several different activities throughout the week. And one of them was that he was having, they, they had a reception which was open to the public, uh, where you can meet and greet with uh, Brian Smith. And then afterwards, he gave an hour talk. I got there to the reception, and I just want to let you know, I did not, it was not premeditated that I was going to interview him, and it was very quick. But once I saw how relaxed it was, I said, hey, well, I can just go right up to him. And I spoke to him for a few minutes, and I said, would you mind answering a question? And if I take a video of you answering a question about what you think the importance of networking is for small business. And he said, oh, sure. He was a really cool guy. I pulled out my little iPhone, put it on video, hit record, and I asked him a question. What, how do you feel, what would you tell a small business owner about the importance of networking? And he just started talking and I recorded it, hit stop. I, cr I created a video around it, put my logo on it. And today, this is one of my most popular posts on Twitter. I, I send it out a couple times a week, links to my YouTube video that I created around Brian Smith telling me his thoughts, right? So it creates the perception that I am, you know, that I'm able to connect with somebody like Brian Smith. I, I just met him that one time, but it's a great piece. And he was more than happy to do it, ex excited to do it. Uh, so, you know, you only get what you ask for. Become an expert source. This is something, you know, again, I want to talk about thought leadership. This is you, you know, reaching out to journalists saying, you know what, uh, the next time you write about this or the next time you report on this, uh, I'd like to be included. Um, this is a great way for you to get PR. You know, pay attention to the news cycle and seasonal opportunities. You know, how can you get involved in the news cycle? You know, are you an expert at whatever is going on? And why not you to speak? If you're watching CNN or MSNBC or any of the news channels, all day long they have people just sitting there and pontificating about things. Those people are, half of them, are not even paid. They're just there on a, because they, they somebody pitched them or they pitched themselves to be on there as an expert talking about something. So why not you? You know, reach out, be bold. Reach out to these news organizations and offer your expertise on an ongoing story. One example of this is recently there was a cold snap in the Northeast that was, it was really, really, really frigid. And I turned on News 12 New Jersey and there was a segment with a reporter uh, out at a uh, heating and cooling company's place, and the owner was standing there talking about the uh, to how to watch out for your HVAC at home. You know, make sure it doesn't overheat and don't overload it. And I'm like, wow, this guy must have called them and said, why don't you have me on? And I, I have some tips on how homeowners can watch out for their their their, their heating system during this cold snap. Wow, what a genius thing! It got him a few minutes on News 12. And that was on rotation all day because that's what they do. So if you, you know, think about doing that. And then also you can also use a service like Help a Reporter Out. And you go to helpareporter.com. The media, it's free. There's a basic service, which is free. They'll email you different queries throughout the day of what the media is looking for. And you can reply to them via email. They give you like a kind of a masked uh, email address. So it's not like you're reaching out to them directly. It's through the tool. Um, but it's a great way to monitor what's being written about or what's being reported on. Oftentimes, there are producers for TV shows that are looking for people to appear in New York or Philly. Um, you should definitely take uh, sign up for that and get those free those free um, media queries so that you can get, put yourself out there a little bit more. Be a thought leader. Okay, so this is really you not just commenting as a thought leader, this is you creating your own content as a thought leader, right? So one of the things you can do is to, you know, content marketing, which is the, pretty much is the, the being capable of creating a piece of content that is educational in nature, that you're going to give to another publisher 
to use. So you could do this for a professional group's e-newsletter, okay? You could do this for a business journal or any type of industry-specific media. You can also write opinion editorials, which sometimes, uh, which is uh, usually shortened to op-ed, uh, which is when you give, you know, you write up a little something if you want to comment on something that's going on in the in the region or or in the in the news, and you want to give your opinion, you can write those up. But cre start creating content. Everybody today is in the position to be a content creator, so I really highly suggest that you make sure that content creation becomes part of your marketing mix. And to leverage the groups and organizations that you already belong to, to get those articles and get those videos and get those things placed. I guarantee you that you are already involved with a group that puts out their own newsletter that you could submit something to and then use it in a heartbeat because they're always looking for content. So start thinking about what that content is. You know, look at, use your, edit, use, make, create an editorial calendar for yourself. Look at the time, seasonal times of the year. You know, in the spring, what do people care about? If you're in the business of, uh, of, of, of home ownership, or if you're in the business of, um, say, interior de decorating or something like that, you know, spring cleaning, you know, what, you know, how can you leverage that typical, they're always looking for something, right? Write something up. What are your top five tips for that? You know, th these are the things that you need to constantly be thinking. How can you insert your expertise into something that won't require a lot of effort? This is, you're, you, you know this stuff. Just start putting it together. Design your own PR opportunity. That is my favorite way to go. Host an event and invite the media to it. it sounds easy enough, right? or participate in someone else's event. I will caution you that if you host an event and you invite the media to it, make sure it's Monday through Thursday before five, between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Uh, it's very difficult to get the media to come out on the weekends unless you have a celebrity there. I always say, unless you're going to have like Bruce Springsteen and Beyonce there uh, on, on a Saturday, you can expect no media there. But try to pull together events that are Monday through Thursday um, and invite the media to it. Make sure there's food. That's always a good draw for the media. Um, but you can create an event that is actually not self-serving, but supports a local nonprofit in a meaningful way. I have an example that I'm going to share with you in a moment. You can unveil a new product. You can make a big deal about unveiling a new product or service. Time to the news cycle. Again, remember the news cycle, thinking about what's happening already that you can kind of hop on. You know, is it a holiday that's coming up or is it one of those milestone days that I talked about Earth Day you know Black Friday you know what is it that you can what can you do to kind of leverage something that you know the media always talks about and you kind of insert yourself in there create a contest or sweepstakes that's a great way to kind of garner some attention for yourself uh, one of my favorite things to tell my clients is to donate a giveaway or a door prize to a fundraising gala. You know, if you could do this in a way that's not uh, that like a monetary gift, like a gift card of, you know, 250 gift card to your store if you have one or or a free membership or something like that. I'm going to do the secret to this is that you get the exposure at the event. Right. They'll usually put you in their, their sponsor book. They'll mention you. you know, of course, when they're pulling the names or whatever it is, they're going to say your company name to the whole crowd. And then somebody wins it. They put it in their bag or their purse. They go home. And I'm telling you, nine times out of 10, they never redeem it. I have done this many times with clients. I had a client that owned a medical spa. And I have a second story with her. Um, and she would always donate a day of beauty or something like that. I think as many times as she did it, maybe once someone actually redeemed it, but she already had gotten the exposure for it and it was great. So and obviously if someone comes in to redeem it, you, you accept it, but most people don't, they forget about them. So it's a great way to get media for yourself. But I helped the same client who had a medical spa in central Jersey. She had a medical spa that, um, that had an annual event every year. And I wanted to, we wanted to do something different one year. And as she said, I want to give some proceeds to an, a needy organization. So I identified a domestic violence shelter for women um, that, of course, was more than happy to accept the donation 
uh, they often have forgotten about uh, shelters. And she made that uh, proceeds from her event, went to that shelter. Then I asked her to go one step further. I said, why don't we create a private event for the women at the shelter? Bust them or get a van, bring them to your location and give them a day of beauty. You know, apply makeup, give them a treatment of some kind. And she loved that idea. So when we did that, we partnered with the shelter. We got a van. Um, she, paid, the, My client paid for the van, brought these women to her location. I invited uh, the Asbury Park Press because my client was in that market. Um, they obliged. They thought it was a great story idea. They, they came. They sent a reporter and a photographer. Photographer took photos of what was going on, but, by, but also concealed some of the identities because it is, you know, women who were in protective kind of custody. Um, but it came out to be a beautiful story, all based on my client's event. You know, we created this whole campaign um, around helping battered women and then giving back to them by having them show up at her location and, and having a total free day of beauty. And it was a wonderful piece that my client still uses as part of her marketing package. So always consider coming up with your own event. Apply for awards and recognitions. This is very, very easy to do and often free, okay? Local and state media, best of, best restaurant in New Jersey, you know, best real estate broker. Look out for these opportunities. Sometimes these are nominated situations and sometimes you can nominate yourself. You know, if you have clients, get them to nominate you, but get in the mix. You're not gonna get one of these recognitions if you don't apply, okay? There's always these industry trade media. They have a bunch of things. Whatever industry you're in, pay attention to your trade media. Look and see what they're advertising. They're always looking for people to apply to be recognized. Um, I have in here a, accounting today's top 100 most influential people. I've gotten several accountants in that list. And one time it was, you know, it was it was huge because it was for a nonprofit organization for accountants, and no one from their leadership had ever been nominated because they hadn't bothered to submit it. Uh, and then they were in it consistently for years and years and years after I got them in the one time. There's 40 under 40. If you are under 40 years old, there are a bunch of business journals, including NJ Biz, the Philly, if you, you know, if you're in the Philly market, uh, there's the Philadelphia uh, Business Journal has their 40 under 40. Um, there's a bunch of them throughout the, throughout the country, really. Uh, look out for those. There's all kinds of women in business awards, small business awards, innovation awards, uh, charitable organization honors, they, you know, the most charitable groups, the most charitable company. The bottom line is, if you're not applying to these, you're missing out. If you get the recognition, it's something you could use for years and years and years and years. There's, for physicians, there's all these top doc. Some of them are granted. Again, you have patients nominate you if you're a physician. But again, it's something you could use. You were a top, who wouldn't want to work with the top doc? Who wouldn't want to work at a best place to work in New Jersey? Who wouldn't want to work to with the woman, top small women, woman in small business? You see where I'm going with this? These are great PR opportunities. And a lot of them are free. Some of them may have an application fee. A lot of them don't. Pick and choose the ones that you feel are best. Look out for not just the local ones in New Jersey. Look out for ones that are national and apply. It's really great PR. Here's a list of some free uh, do-it-yourself PR resources that we mentioned throughout this presentation, okay? So we have patch.com. If you're not on patch, it's very easy. You log into patch.com. You're able to access, uh, once they send you your confirmed username and password, you can choose the community you want to engage with on patch, and it should be the one that where you are operating your business or, or would like to. And then there's an area called, you can submit news to, uh, they have people, the editors, um, and they're just local people, but you can also submit your own news without any without oversight in their community bulletin board. You can do this twice a week if you wanted to. You can do it once a month. It's a great as long as it's a, you know they they will kick you out if it's something that's not, what they feel is not appropriate. But if you put something out, especially if you're putting together tips and tricks, post to Patch.com. If you have a press release that you've developed, use PRLog.org. It's ad supported. So that means that you, you can have your ads taken off. I think you pay an extra $50. They'll put your press release up there without an ad. But it's a great place to have a press release. You may or may not get media out of it, but what it will do is it'll it'll give you a link to your site. Um, and you may get some traffic out of it. And also it's good for your, your search and optimization. 
We mentioned earlier, help a reporter out, which is uh, also uh, abbreviated as HARO, H-A-R-O. Uh, you go to helpareporter.com and you can sign up for their basic uh, subscription, which will send you media queries uh, in all different types of industries and categories. And you can pick and choose. Just make sure that you're not spamming them, but respond to the, their needs. Okay. LinkedIn, you can publish posts on LinkedIn. You can do this every day if you wanted to do. You know, again, just make sure that you know they do have some some minimal oversight to so make sure that people are not doing anything crazy. But you can post a picture with your post. Um, you can create an article with tips. You can link back to your site. This is a great way to get your information out there if you're engaged on LinkedIn in any capacity. If you're not engaged on LinkedIn, you know, maybe skip this one. But if you're trying to build relationships, which is how you use LinkedIn, it's really a relationship builder. It's not a place to market. Um, make sure that you start using the publish, you know, create, start creating content and post it to LinkedIn. Use Google Alerts for just about anything. I use Google Alerts to find out uh, things that I can tweet. Uh, I have searches for small business. I have searches for surveys and research. Uh, because sometimes there's some great survey information that I could use in my articles that I write for clients or that I'm writing for my business. Uh, use Google Alerts to help you kind of find out what's going on. Find out what events are happening in your in your area or in general. You know, create a Google Alert for you know uh, conferences and conventions. Google Alerts is amazing. It saves so much saves the time of you kind of hand searching and puts things right in your inbox. So Google Alerts is fantastic for that. And for research purposes, I will not recommend, because it's very expensive, for a small business owner who's just starting out with a press, press, writing press releases to put them on PR Newswire or Business Wire. It could cost you thousands of dollars to do that. But what I do suggest is that you use PR Newswire and Business Wire to learn what a press release looks like. Be a, a business Wire has press releases that are going up all day long by professionals like myself who work at uh, large and medium size or even small companies, you know, this is what they do. Start looking at the style of press release. What are they putting in there? Look at the structure. You know, base, don't reinvent the wheel. Use these tools like PR Newswire and Business Wire to help you draft your own press release. Okay? I can't stress that more. One key takeaway, if anything else, that we have from this presentation today is that if you make an effort to gain exposure for your business by always looking for public relations opportunities wherever you go. Make an effort to gain exposure for your business by always looking for public relations opportunities wherever you go, okay? So that means if you're at an event, like I said earlier, if you're at an event, look around. Who's there? Who's speaking? Is there anybody with a camera? Walk up to that person and say, hi, who are you with? Oh, okay. Um, well, and then you just start start talking about yourself. And be like, oh, well, I'm here because blah, blah, blah. Maybe they'll take your picture. Maybe they're also the reporter because sometimes that's true. You might get something out of that. So just, just pay attention to those types of opportunities. They're there. Now that I've brought this up and you have awareness of it, you'll start to, it's like when you, when you find out your friend bought a new car and you never heard of that car before, then suddenly you start seeing that, car, that same car everywhere on the road. Hopefully you'll have this presentation will have that effect. And you'll start recognizing ways that you can leverage a public relations opportunity for your business. And I'm hoping that that happens. So if any of this was overwhelming, and I hope it wasn't, I hope that there's some things that you, there's some takeaways here that you can, that you can do. Um, you can always get help from the Small Business Development Center at the College of New Jersey, right? Reminder is that we're here um, to help you uh, by providing no-cost business consulting. We can also, if you need one, a, provide a, a needs assessment. Again, there's no strings attached. Everything we offer through the center um, as far as the counseling and the assessments are, are no cost. And we invite you to do that. And if you happen to be on this, uh, listening to this presentation, and you're not in this area of Mercer County, um, please find a, a, a SBDC near you by going to njsbdc.com. But we, told, we invite you to, to please uh, use the services of the, of the uh, ASBDC at, at TCNJ as much as possible.
and here's our contact information, please reach out, please leverage. And one of the things I want to bring up is that we do have a, uh, one of our networking events are coming up uh, at the end, uh, excuse me, in March, on March 18th. There are two handouts. I, I mentioned them earlier. There are two handouts in your control panel. If you look at your control panel, uh, you'll see two handouts for our events. Um, please download those. Please register for those events. And we, we will have one uh, in April that, that information is forthcoming. So please make sure that you are leveraging all the opportunities. Our networking events are free and it's a great time. And you know, we, we, we promote that you should always shamelessly network at these events. So please do so. And I'm looking to see if anybody has any questions. Uh, I don't see any questions yet, uh, but I do want to point out that if you have any questions after this, please reach out to the center. We'd be happy to, to have any chats with you to kind of go over anything else that you find uh, that you need more clarity on. And I do hope that you all enjoyed this presentation and that if you are out anywhere publicly, the next time you're at an event, next time you're at a luncheon, that you're at a dinner, that you look around and you pay attention to who's there and how you can better, how, how can you get your information out to someone who's there in a larger way than you just standing around and talking to people? Is there someone there who is going to put together a story and how can you be a part of that story? Always think about that. Always be looking for new ways to market your business. So thank you so much for joining me today. And if you have any questions, again, please reach out to us. We are here for you at the Small Business Development Center at the College of New Jersey. Have a great day.